Hi everybody, it's Martha from Discovery Fabrics and today we're going to do a video on base layers. We field questions every single day for people looking for what's the best base layer fabric for X, Y, and Z activity. Sometimes it's not even an activity, it's just it's winter and I get cold easily. So what we've done is we've pulled out our full lineup of what we consider to be base layer fabrics and we're going to go each go through each one as well as show you a few ready to wear examples so if you have something you like you might recognize this and then you can pick one of our fabrics to replicate it and we're also going to talk a little bit about why you might choose one over the other so for the purposes of this video we're primarily talking about base layers as being a fabric that you're wearing next to your skin when you're outside in colder temperatures and there's a reasonable chance you're going to be sweating. So the reason why that's an important distinction is because in terms of a layering system, base layers are often considered that primary first layer fabric that's going to move the moisture off your skin and start moving it through the subsequent layers that you're wearing. And the reason why fabrics were developed to do this was because when you're out in a cold environment, if you're feeling damp, and the moisture doesn't have anywhere to go, that leads to getting chilled faster, you're uncomfortable, and it can, in some extreme cases, lead to hypothermia. So the primary goal of the base layer is to grab the moisture that you're generating if you're exerting yourself, and to pull it off your body and push it through the layers. Everybody has their personal preference. I have mine, and I'm very strongly opinionated about mine, as you'll see when I start to talk, but everybody has their own preference, and that's fine. There is actually no one perfect fabric, and sometimes it takes experimenting with a bunch to figure out which one is the best for you personally. So we'll start at the far end here, and we're gonna move our way through. So starting off, I've got Polar Tech Power Dry in both a lightweight style and a midweight style. And I have Quick Quick Lightweight and Quick Quick Midweight and our new Red Heat Jersey. So the reason why I've got these sort of all lumped together is one, as Polar Tech, when they invented Power Dry, the primary purpose of the fabric was a moisture wicking, fast drying base layer. So it does an exceptional job of pulling moisture off your skin and getting it moving to the outside. Here are a couple of examples. So here is a ready to wear, a uh, zip tee made out of something very similar to a lightweight style. And here is an example of another big brand name. This was their midweight, very similar to Power Dry midweight. So these are my actual personal preferences. I really like them because the polyester doesn't absorb any moisture. It dries extremely quickly once you stop exerting. So I can come in from a, a run if I'm wearing this shirt and I start to dry really, really quickly. Show that one. So this is the whole, sorry, long underwear. It's a long, so this is a long underwear base? That's a long underwear base bottom. This is a top. I just picked random pieces out of my drawer. <laughs> so there's tops and bottoms all mixed up here. So you may look at this lightweight one and though think, well, how is in the world is that gonna keep me warm in the winter? The goal of this base layer is not to keep me warm, it's to pull moisture off my skin. So if I'm wearing this as my base layer, my mid layers are going to be warmer and that's where I'm going to generate my warmth. Okay, moving along. So Red Heat is very similar in texture and weight to the Power Dry Lightweight and the Quick Quick Lightweight. Going up one notch, Polar Tech then came up with a fabric that they initially called Power Dry High Efficiency, which then became Power Grid. So Power Grid is distinctive because it's got the channels on the back that let the moisture and the heat through and little tiny cushions of varying sizes to give you a little bit of warmth. So if you're particularly sweaty, I'd go with the Power Grid Mid Warmth because it's going to be more breathable than the Power Grid High Warmth. That's my personal preference because I want as much moisture to get away from my body as possible, so I like the smaller grids. If I just want to be cozy, then I'll certainly wear a power grid top. This is a high warmth one, but I might wear that as my, say, apres ski as opposed to my base layer, or I'd use it as a mid layer on top of something lighter. Then there are the wool people that love wool, 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 always has to be wool. And I like wool too. So here's an example of a very lightweight wool jersey top that I have. I do pull this out when the temperatures get colder. I'm a little bit picky with wool though because I have very sensitive wool <laughs> feelings so I have to 
the wool has to be really soft for me to wear it. So I will wear wool. Lightweight like this is very similar to our merino jersey. So it's just a very thin, lightweight merino jersey, 100% wool, makes an excellent base layer. The one thing with wool though is, it is gonna hang on to moisture. So while it will still keep you warm when wet, that's a trademark of wool, um, it won't dry as fast. So what Polar Tech did was they came up with power wool. And power wool combines merino fibers on the wrong side with polyester fibers on the fa face. And what that does is it helps speed up the evaporation of the moisture and it's more durable on the face as well. So silk weight power wool is similar in weight to this light merino jersey and this lightweight top I have. It's got the wool fibers on the wrong side, polyester fibers on the base. So silk weight would be comparable to uh, say icebreaker 100 weight styles. Then we have power wool midweight. Power wool midweight looks suspiciously like or power wool lightweight, I'm sorry, this is power wool lightweight, <laughs> looks very much like some of our power grid styles. So it has big channels to allow moisture through and breathability, and then the little cushions for warmth. So those little cushions are merino fibers. And again, the face of the fabric is polyester, help with moisture wicking and fast drying. The heavyweight power wool looks like fleece on the wrong side, but it's merino fleece. And then on the face, you have the polyester jersey face. Personally, I would not wear this as a base layer. I'd consider it more as a mid layer because again, for me, I need something that's gonna pull moisture really well and that's why I like the lighter layer first. Then I might wear this on top. Moving into the Power Stretch family. So Power Stretch makes great base layers because it is super stretchy. So it's Polartex fabric that was designed to move with you in any kind of active condition and have good recovery. So here's a Polartech Power Stretch jersey. It's got a twill back and a smooth face and just so happens <laughs> that I got a pair of long underwear out of a very, very similar fabric. And these are actually my favorites. And the reason why these are one of my favorite pairs is I love how slippery the face of it is. So it does mean as I'm layering up, my subsequent layers slide on this really nicely. And this does a great job of being moisture wicking and fast drying. Next up is Power Stretch Fleece Back in one of the lighter weight styles. So it's got a very fine micro fleece back, super smooth face, super stretchy and then beside it we've got the power our regular power stretch fleece back that most of our styles are so again super stretchy but it's got a bigger fleece backing so i mentioned a second ago how i'm kind of a diehard for the light base layer and building my warmth so how do i do that here's what i do so if i'm wearing lightweight tops and bottoms if it's not very cold out so I don't know, a few degrees below freezing, I throw on something similar to a hundred weight fleece on top of that. So this happens to be hundred weight fleece from a thousand years ago. Look at that, got a little polar tech tag in there. Um, I find this suitable on Vancouver Island for just about every temperature down to about minus 20. This plus this gives me plenty of warmth as long as I have a wind shell on top. If that's not quite warm enough, then I go to my got to get my order right here my 200 weight fleece pants also a thousand years old also polar tech this is what I wore in the Yukon every day for a lot of years in the winter time so I had my lightweight base layers my 200 weight fleece and then my Gore-Tex shell bibs so I wore that on the bottom every day if it got to minus 30 minus 40 instead of 200 weight fleece I had 300 weight fleece pants and I wore those under my shells. So that was how I built my layering system with something always light on the bottom and adjusting my warmth with my other layers. I found that gave me the most versatility and kept me the most comfortable. Now again, we started the video saying everybody's gonna have a personal preference. That's mine. But if you choose any one of these fabrics mentioned here, you're gonna have a great base layer. It's, there's nothing wrong with any of these. So you can experiment with a couple and see what you like. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always ask them in our group. So inspired by Discovery Trekking and check our YouTube page for, or by Discovery Fabrics. <laughs> and on our YouTube page, we'll have the links to all of these as well. Thanks for watching.